WCN teenagers. Um, first, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to be with you for this winter term. I have really enjoyed spending Wednesday nights with you, and I hate that our time uh, ended so abruptly and we didn't get to finish it uh, in person. Um, I hate it for my sake because I enjoyed uh, so much being with all of you guys. I, uh, I didn't want to just leave us hanging where we were. I want to be able to uh, give you the rest of the content um, in this format, just to get it out to you this way, so that you can have uh, the last bit of what I'd planned for us to, to be talking about. Um, first, I'm going uh, I'm gonna recap a little bit of, of where we've been, just to refresh your memory. And for some of those of, of you who weren't able to be there for all of it, you can uh, you can uh, be able to catch up with us. Uh, we've talked about the stories um, that 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 shape our lives, and uh, a, a lot of what it means to be human is to sift through all the stories. And when when young people are your age, you start kind of sifting through the stories, all the available stories out there, kind of like. Goldilocks, uh, trying this, trying this, trying this to see which one fits you best. And there are all kinds of stories out there. There's an endless amount of stories. There's the climb the ladder story. There's the uh, pot junkie story. There's the beauty queen story. There's the country boy story. There's the work ethic story. All kinds of stories out there. And, and what a lot of people do throughout the courses of their lives, starting your age, is they just start trying on different stories and a lot of people throughout the course of their life um, they they try on three four five different stories and maybe you've already seen it start to happen with some of your peers they've gone from one thing and just made a, a wild swing just to another uh, thing in their lives and so this is what we do we sift stories even people as old as me uh, still try different stories on and try different different things there is one story uh, there that is greater and fuller and grander. Um, it's it's a story that you don't um, uh, get hold of, but it's a story that gets hold of you. It's a story that you don't possess; it possesses you. It's a story that you don't lay claim to, but instead, it's a story that lays claim to you. Um, it's it's uh, this this story is a story that you don't you don't choose but it's more of a story that chooses you it's a story that you get swept up into it's a story that's bigger uh, than than all the other stories that are out there and it's more life-giving and the story is called gospel um, the word gospel is a christian word um, it means uh, good news um, and it's really actually an old military word as as, uh, as a, a victory was won on the battlefield, they didn't have Twitter to get the word out. So they'd send a, a runner, uh, fast feet, loud mouth, to shout out the news. The battle's over, the victory's won, our king is on the throne, our enemies have been defeated. And, and that's what the gospel is. It is the good news. It's the story of the good news that Jesus, through his death and his resurrection, have defeated the powers of sin and death and hell and darkness and that we can have life, that we can have abundant life, that we can have real life. We're swept up into that story of, of life. The Bible shares that story with us. The Bible is not the story. Uh, the Bible offers the story. The Bible reveals the story. Another word for the Bible is scripture. And the root word of scripture is script. The Bible is the script of the story that just kind of tells us the plot line. One of the things that we did early on in this term was to think through a lot of images of the Bible. Some of them helpful and healthy. Some of them are not very helpful and not very healthy. One of my favorite images is that of a telescope. The Bible is like a telescope. It's not something you look at. It's something you look through. That's what the Bible is. Because the Bible itself was never meant to be the point, never meant to be the main thing. We love and we cherish and we appreciate the Bible, but if our focus is just on the Bible itself, then, then we've missed what the Bible is trying to do. The Bible is like a telescope, not meant to be looked at, but meant to be looked through. And, 
and we look through the Bible to see Christ more clearly as God has revealed himself through Christ uh, in Scripture to us. Uh, we've talked about how science asks how. That's the question of science. That faith is really doing something else. Faith is asking why. And so, so science has its questions, and that's great. History has its questions, and that's great. The, the Bible itself, it's, it's, a, it's a faith book. It's a why book more than it is, more than it is a how, uh, more than it is trying to tell us history. But it's telling us why, why God is and why God does and why we are and, and starts to answer those questions for us. I hope that one thing that you take with you and, and remember from our time together is, is the plot line. It's really every story, but particularly this story. The plot line that goes from hey, to oops, to hmm, to aha, to yeah. Every story has that plot line. The hey is the story of creation. It's the beginning. It gets our attention about uh, getting us interested in the story, who we are and who God is and why we're here. And then comes the oops pretty quickly. And it's the story of sin. It's the story of the fall of humanity and when everything begins to break and go haywire. Then there's the hmm. The hmm is God's pursuit to bring us back to that right relationship that we had in the first place. And that hmm, that pursuit lasts for most of the Bible, for most of history, uh, as God goes on this grand pursuit to recover us. And then there's the aha. The aha is not a, a thing or a what, but a person. The aha is Jesus himself, his coming to us, uh, his death, his resurrection for us. That's the aha of history. And then we get to the yeah. The yeah is the culmination. It is one day when everything's going to be put back together the right way. The last two chapters of the Bible, the, um, the yeah, look a lot like the beginning. They look a lot like the hey. And Mr. Eugene mentioned one week that you just flip the letters around and the yeah and the hey are the same letters just flipped around. And so, uh, so the first couple of chapters of the Bible look a whole lot like the last couple of chapters of, of the Bible. Really, at its heart, it's a love story. It's a love story. It's, a, it's about a God who wants to win us back, to bring us back to Him, and He'll go at any cost to get us back. The Bible tells the story of salvation, and the root word is salvage. Just like Mr. Eugene will go out and salvage a boat, to take, take a boat in disrepair, and he'll salvage it to make it useful for the future. Uh, that's what God has done for us. He has salvaged us, that salvation, uh, so that we have been recovered and restored uh, to, a, to a better condition. And, and so the Bible is primarily a book about God's work to, to salvage us. That's what the plot line is about. That's what the story offers. We talked about the Christian calendar, which follows the plot line. And every year we go through the seasons of the calendar that tell the story of Jesus so that we can rehearse and remember and relive. And as we do, we are formed and we are shaped more to be like Jesus. We talked about the five forms of the Bible throughout history. The Bible's gone from oral transmission to animal skins to papyrus to the bound book as most of us know it. And now the fifth form is, is that it's in digital. Um, it's never been about the form. It's always been about the content. Think about early on, there was no book. It was just the story about the God who saves. And so, um, uh, so the content, again, is most important. We're not looking at it, but through it to, to see Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. We've talked about dynamic inspiration, that God has inspired the Bible. The word inspire, spirit is in it. The spirit of God is in it, giving life to the Bible. And it's not just that the Bible was inspired once upon a time when, when it was written, when the, when the words were written down, but we believe in dynamic inspiration, that the Spirit continues to breathe life into the Scriptures and they continue to come to life, come alive so God can breathe life into us. 
um, and, and that's what makes it beautiful and, and life-giving for us. Um, we, we have uh, talked about the timeline of Scripture and how messy that was. I, I just had to skate over that stuff, but it was a messy process, the Bible coming to be the Bible. It wasn't very clean cut. And, and what I love about that is that my life is a pretty messy process too. And, and knowing that, um, that the Bible came out of such a messy process tells me and reminds me that God can take the messy stuff in my life and bring something beautiful and life-giving out of that as well. We talked about the genres of the Bible and how all of the different types of literature in the Bible combined and gather together into one voice to tell us the story of salvation. And the last time we were together, I'm glad I had the opportunity, made the opportunity to do this, to pray the prayer of salvation and to invite some of you who maybe haven't prayed that prayer before. And there were five of you who did. And I've already reached out to you. And I've been praying for you. And I'm so grateful. And wh whether you prayed it long ago or whether you prayed it just a few weeks ago when we got together, I want to encourage you to journey in your relationship with God. So here's where I was going to go our last two times together. Uh, I, I just simply want to talk to you about uh, the story of, of Scripture, the story of the Gospel, the story that, that you have in your Bible, what it means to let it have you, uh, to, to grow in relationship. Um, here are a few things I want you to know. This story that you've been swept up into is a story that is too big for you to live on your own. Don't even try. Don't try to be a Christian by yourself. Uh, this is why church is important. This is why worship is important. This is why connecting with like-minded believers and praying together and, and singing together and serving together and being the church together is so critical. Don't make the mistake of trying to live this story on your own. It's too big for you to live on your own. It was meant for us to live together. Church matters. Uh, this is a story in which you are not the main character. All those other stories, the stories that the world offers, the problem with so many of those stories is that in those stories, you're the main character. And I don't need to be the main character of any story. Um, I need a story in which Jesus is the main character. And there, there's this radical shift in a person's life when you go from your story where you're the main character to be entering into a story in which Jesus is the main character. Man, I'm secondary. I'm, I'm behind the scenes. He's the main character of my life. And, and when you know that, you live your life differently. You live your life for Him. Um, remember that when you read the Bible, and do read the Bible, it's about relationship. God is talking. It's His living word. Listen. A, a lot of the importance of communication is listening. Just hear what God has to say through the scriptures. Um, when you read, you don't always have to read to get something out of it. Some people say to me sometimes, Pastor, I'm just not getting anything out of reading the Bible. Well, it's not about getting information, it's about a relationship. Um, when you're with somebody you love, you don't always get something out of it. You don't always get information, you don't always gain stuff. You just have the appreciation and the joy of being with the one you love. So you don't have to always get something out of the Bible when you read it. Just be with the one you love. When you read the Bible, um, it's not always best if you're a, a beginner to start at the beginning and try to work your way all the way through like you would another book. Um, I encourage you to start with the book of Mark and then after the book of Mark, read James. Then after the book of James, read the book of Philippians. Um, I have a reason for those three books in that order. Um, that's a great way to start if you're beginning. And then you can read other books of the Bible from, uh, from there. The most important question to ask whenever you read any part of the Bible is, what is God up to here? That's infinitely a more important question than how does this make me feel or what does this say to me? That's the big question. What is God up to in this, in this story, in this passage? Because whatever God was up to then, chances are that's the work that God wants to be up to now and is up to now 
and we can cooperate with him now in these days. When you read the Bible, make time. Don't find time, make time. If you try to find time, you'll never find enough. You gotta make it, carve it out. And when you do, tend to your surroundings. Make sure that you're undistracted. Turn technology off, let it go. Uh, get, get in a quiet place, even if you have to lock yourself in the bathroom for a while, or, or go sit on a bench or a chair or something somewhere. Uh, be alone, be away from technology, be away from distractions. Tend to your surroundings so that you can put yourself in a position to really hear from God. When you read the Bible, look for the sharp edges. That's the stuff that kind of uh, doesn't go down so easy. There are a lot of sharp edges in the Bible. Places where God wants to kind of get hold of you and bring about some change and, and, uh, and, and do some things to you. Let that stuff happen. Don't just gravitate toward the feel-good stuff, but look for the sharp edges. You know, that's a sign of growth. It's a sign of maturity when we can take the sharp edges of the Bible and let them work on us and change us. That really is a good thing, even though it might not always feel good, it is good. And I would say to you, and I wanted to do this for us as a group, and maybe some of you can do this in your Bible studies or uh, Sunday school classes, or maybe when you get back together for diving deeper on Sunday nights, I wanted to do something with you called an Ignatian reading. And it's where you basically, you have a, a story in the Bible and you read it together. And you can do this on your own or you can do it in groups. And, and you um, use your senses. You put yourself in the story like you're standing there when it's happening. Like you're, on, like you're on the shore of the Sea of Galilee when Jesus is walking up to those guys. Or like you're, you're in the crowded house uh, when, when, uh, when they start digging through the roof and get that guy to Jesus. Or whatever the story is, put yourself there. Be a character. Be a bystander. A fly on the wall in the story. What do you smell? What can you taste? What can you touch, feel, physically feel? Um, what, what do you hear? What are the sounds that you hear in the story? What do you see? Engage it on that level. Really take time to read it slowly and put yourself there. Doing that will help you encounter the message, the story, the power, the life of Scripture on a much deeper level. Um, so be willing to engage it like that and gather groups when you can, when we're allowed to get in groups again. Gather groups and do this. Engage in the Bible in these ways. And most importantly, when you read Scripture and encounter the story of the Gospel, enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be joy-filled. It's meant to be life-giving. It's meant to be good. So enjoy your time in the scriptures. Thank you for giving me these weeks. I want to thank all of your youth leaders who do a great job all the time. Um, I want you to know that these are hard days for all of us. Um, and uh, reach out to me or any one of the youth leaders. Um, uh, reach, reach out to any of us. And if you have questions or concerns or if you want to talk or want to pray, know that you're not alone. These are hard days and that we get to, um, even in times like this, share in life together and be there for each other. If you need me at all, my phone number is 209-0813. Reach out to me. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you.